Смотрите, мы с вами находимся сейчас в поселке, который называется Старая Ангасовка. Приехать сюда на машине невозможно, дороги сюда автомобиля нету. То есть добраться до поселка можно пешком, как мы с вами пришли, по кругобайкальской железной дороге или по воде. Все, машина сюда не проезжает. После небольшого... See the previous video, the link in the description. We return to the railway to continue our route. As I mentioned in the first part of this video, link in the description, we had a total of 19 kilometers to walk, with 11 kilometers being along the Krugobaikal railway. From the village of Old Angasolka to the village of Kultuk. Unfortunately, the weather was kind to us. A glorious sunny day contributed significantly to the hike and promised to let's enjoy the view of the golden buckle in all its splendor and glory. Yes, it was known as the golden buckle due to the extremely high cost of the Krugobaikal railway construction. The road was just incredibly full of complex engineering structures. Moreover, every kilometer of this road was built almost by hand. 38 tunnels, 56 stone galleries, 248 bridges and viaducts. The Kruglebeikel Railroad has become a truly unique monument of engineering and creative work on a planetary scale. This most is from 1905. There we have the first bridge. And this most, on which we are standing now, is the second step. The construction of the new technology is also very beautiful and not very beautiful. About 14,000 people were involved in the construction of Kruglebeikel Railway. In addition to Russian citizens, the labor of foreign workers was actively used, in particular, Italians. According to the government commission, the remuneration of Italian workers for approximately the same work was three to four times higher than that of Russian workers. Although there was not much difference in the results of their work after the same order, the advantage of the Italians over the Russians, according to the Commission's report, was only the greater continuity of their work, fewer days of holiday, and less consumption of alcoholic beverages, which sometimes interfered with their work. As we walk through this magical place, I want to share something intimate with you. Unfortunately, not everything was so great during our expedition. Only five hours were allotted for the 19-kilometer route over a forest path and sleepers. Moreover, the time was strictly limited, because at the end of our trip, in the village of Kultuk, we had to have time to get into a minibus for which we had already bought tickets in advance. Due to this circumstance, we had to rush, leaving no time to indulge in the breathtaking views surrounding us. Furthermore, we had to be vigilant and constantly watch our steps to avoid injuring ourselves. Come here. If you attempt to walk across the railway sleepers and the large crushed stones between them, you will quickly realize that it is an unpleasant activity.
Despite these drops of tar in our honey jar, we were still overjoyed that we passed through Krugo Baikal Railway, such a truly enchanting and magical place. And although with one eye, the other was always turned under our feet, but we saw all these incredible beauties. Very close to the village of Kultuk, we met a local train that runs regularly between Baikal Port and Sludyanka. In Russian, in this case, the verb to run sounds like motoyetsya. That is why the locals affectionately called the train Matanya. As you understand, the Matanya is the only means of transport connecting a few settlements on the coast of Lake Baikal. Matani takes about five hours to cover the distance of almost 90 kilometers. And still, we have reached the end point of our Krugobaikal railway route, the village of Kultuk. The village of Kultuk is the westernmost settlement on the Baikal coast. The name is of Turkic origin and means Bay Lip. Kultuk is also remarkable because it was the first Russian settlement in the south of Lake Baikal and it was founded in 1647 by a well-known explorer, a Russian Cossack, Yakov Pokhabov. Yes, the same who is the founder of the largest city in eastern Siberia, Irkutsk. You can learn more about it in the film dedicated to our tour of Irkutsk. You can find a link to it in the description. Originally, Kultuk was just a fort, but in an official document from 1744, Kultuk is already mentioned as a village. In the village of Kultuk lived three women, three men, and nine children. And in 1823, the writer and historian Alexi Martos, who visited here, wrote, The village is located at the western end of the sea. Kultuk is correctly built. It has 21 houses. A road runs parallel to the bend of the sea. Kultuk, to the credit of the inhabitants and the local authorities, is kept in such cleanliness as can be found in Norway or Holland. The inhabitants practice agriculture and fishing in abundance. Omul, whitefish, grayling and burbot abound here. Since 1936, Kultuk has the status of a settlement of urban type. Finally, I would like to show you another way to observe the lake, albeit from a distance. You can ride on this excursion train, which, as you can see, has a real steam locomotive running along the tracks. The route starts at Irkutsk station. You take the train to Slyudyanka, and then along Kruglobaikal Railway to Baikal Port. In my opinion, it would be very interesting to take a ride. A link to excursions with this train can be found in the description. Very tired, but very happy, we returned to Irkutsk. Of course, it was not easy to walk so much time on sleepers and on rough gravel, but it was also very beautiful and very inspired by God. And that is the main thing.